Cinema Classics is sponsored by WCPE 90.5 FM, Columbus, Ohio, and is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows online at wcpe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm KG Klein. And this is Cinema Classics. And this is the time of year when we can, whether you like it or not, we're going to have to look back at 2022. And maybe the ones that most impressed us, and at, at the same time, think about the Golden Globes. They're the first organization to come out with their, the best of nominations. The Golden Globes nominations are out and they are sometimes a good indicator of future nominations and they're worth paying attention to. Yeah, all right. So uh, we're not going to rank them this time because we're going to wait till we get the Oscar nominations and then do our own ranking at That's the same right. time. So right, right now we're just throwing out there movies that impressed us over the year. And what an interesting year this has been. Uh, you know, go, going into the, the awards season here, it's, it's been a, a year where we've had a lot of very angry movies. That's the first thing that stands out to me, is there's been a lot of, of mean movies. Now, I'm thinking in terms of The Menu and um, uh, Banshees of Inishirin and Triangle of Sadness. And, and even Avatar, even Avatar has kind of a mean side to it. Well, yes, I think that I think the uh, films are most impressive when they are angry, and they're the ones that I like the best, the dark ones. Um, and but I will go with a comedy like your Babylon. Oh um, my goodness! So as we, I say your yeah, Babylon, my Babylon, you liked it better I, than I did. I absolutely loved it. I, I I definitely it's definitely become my favorite film of the year, and uh, and. It, it, I, Babylon is such a wonderful film for anyone who's worked in the industry because it really does reward you for what you know and it makes you feel really good about yourself too because yeah. it shows that you're standing on the shoulders of giants who were making movies in a very guerrilla style back in the 1920s out in the desert, three movies being made simultaneously, cameras getting destroyed, people getting killed. Uh, just for the sake of the art. Well, yeah. I had to get over the first few minutes when you had an elephant pooping on the uh, worker. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, yeah, and I thought Chazelle was going for a lot of style, which he, he has and he shows here. Well, and we wondered what was going on with this movie because the, the it didn't get previewed at any of the film festivals no, in the summer, it. which is usually not a good yeah, sign. I usually know. that means the studio's lost faith in the movie, it's not going to live up to expectations, so we figured, oh, Babylon's going to be a, a nice little Brad Pitt piece that's not going to be yeah. very important. Once upon, a pot, once upon a Time in Hollywood on steroids. Oh, my gosh. Then the movie comes up, but we found out that he, <laughs> Damien Chazelle had just been re-editing the movie all through the fall. He was still editing that movie practically up to Thanksgiving. Well, you know, um, you and I have a favorable attitude toward it. I, I love Hollywood. I love how to, Hollywood with navel, navel gazes. And, uh, you know, I get a big kick out of it. I thought the section on the transition between the silent and the talkies was very good. Very, I would say any film student would want to look at that to see that, to, using my word, the chaos of trying it, to it sink It does a great silent. job of taking you there <laughs> yes. and helping you experience yeah. what it must have been like to make movies at that time period when it was nothing like you have today. I, you, you see Bel Air in the beginning of the movie and it's a bunch of orchards <laughs> with one house, one house. Well, you know, it is listed as uh, in the Golden Globes as Best Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy nominee. So I think that's appropriate. I, I would, I'm more inclined to put it in with the, the non-comedies, but uh, I'll with take- With the drama, with yeah. With the dramas, I would, because yeah. I think the movie did start out as a comedy and from what is coming out of, of yeah. Hollywood, he trimmed most of the humor out of the movie uh, before it was released. All right, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, all right? Okay. A film you and I both loved before anybody else knew about it, The Banshees. Banshees of Insurance. <laughs> oh, yes. We reviewed that and we yes. loved it. And I told you when you were cor correct and I was wrong, 
nobody would pay attention to it. It was so good. <laughs> I said, my fellow Americans will not like it. And it's, it's up there with all of them. Well, the performances are so strong in that movie. You, you've got three really, really strong performances in that film that I think are going to carry it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you can't ignore this year. And, and I, well, let me say uh, that that is listed, again, under the comedy. On the, which is a bit of a stretch, although if you take it the right way, it could be comedy. It was billed as a dark comedy, but I, I just don't see it as that funny. I know, I know, I don't either. <laughs> well, you got best friends suddenly separated, uh, with barely a, a reason for their, you know, the one telling the other friend to take it. Take a nosedive. I'm out. I'm out of here. I don't and, remember laughing at all. No, I don't. I do not either. Except Colin Farrell now and then. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. a little bit uh, out of it. And, and Barry you know, Kilgan maybe once or twice. Right. I might have been laughing at his right. shifting accent. <laughs> but anyway, we sure, I, I would like to tackle with you one uh -huh. was my one of my favorites yeah. of the year. See what you thought about the Fablemans. The Fablemans. Okay, the Fablemans is Spielberg's love letter to his his to his group his, his growing up and his experiences, and trying to help us understand what shaped the person that would become Steven Spielberg. Now, if you put Fablemans back to back with Babylon, Fablemans becomes... Avatar? Or Avatar, well, not to say Babylon. Uh, if you put... You said Avalon, very good. Oh, Bab a combination of Avatar and Babylon. And Babylon, nice. there we go, we got them both covered now. <laughs> the underwater version of Babylon. Uh, but if you were to put Fablemans back to back with Babylon, uh, Fablemans becomes little more than a home movie. It's a wonderfully done home movie, but it's not that spectacular. It's a biopic. It's a very intimate it story. Is, yeah. I think Spielberg is likely to get the nomination. He, well, he got the nomination for, for Best Director. Yeah. And um, uh, I don't see the movie really, other than Director, I don't see it carrying much weight. No, and I think you're right. Now, somewhere in here, Ken, and it's listed under Best Motion Picture Drama, uh, Top Gun. How do you figure that one? Uh, the Golden Globes are notorious for being much more forgiving of action films and movies that make a lot of money. Um, so you're going to see a film like Top Gun and Avatar get nominated in the Golden Globes, but you're not going to see those nominations continue. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think you're right. And I, I just adored Fablemans because I could hear, uh, I could hear him throughout the film, and I could, I could hear the. Uh, the the, the mom moments of love from a child as he discovers film. And I suspect you were probably, it could have starred right in that. I, I wish I had actually heard him in the movie. I think that movie would have benefited from a narration. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, very yeah. really good. Yes, yes, yeah. I, yeah. You suggest that before. And I think you're, I think you're right. It would, it would have helped a yeah. lot. All right, now here's one, Ken, that I can't figure. I think it may have one nomination among the Golden Globes. And this is called Till. Oh, the movie about Emma Till. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think you saw it. Did oh, you no, see? I did see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I can't understand. I thought it was a better film than people are giving credit for it. I would agree. It is a better film than people are giving credit for it. There were some great performances. The mother's performance. Yeah. Was absolutely. And she's fantastic. not even nominated. She's not even nominated. Wow. Um, and it did get, it got overlooked. And I'm not sure why. It didn't do well in theaters. It didn't make much money. Um, and, but it should not have been overlooked. No, there's a, there's, a, there's a formula, it seems like to me, that it follows. And maybe that could be the reason. The people aren't seeing anything new, even though historically it's accurate about Emmett Till. But I, I mean, there's something about it that didn't... Um, it's it not didn't... your first movie made about the Till story. Um, I believe it was done as a TV movie a couple times. Yeah. But also, this is not the first time that an Elvis movie has been made, and yet we've got Elvis nominated. Yeah, say, oh, and, and he is nominated for Best Actor. He is nominated for Best Actor. The movie is nominated for Best Film. Uh, whether it's going to carry any attraction into the awards, I don't know. I, I would say it's, it's towards the back of the pack. Austin Butler did a terrific job yeah. as Elvis. Yeah, he did a terrific job. And there job. are some people who stayed away from that too. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think the men category is weak this year. Okay, I don't see, I, you know, I love Colin Farrell and, and uh, Brendan, but I still don't, yeah, I, I still, I, I don't see that kind of role as the, the way I think in the females. In, up until two weeks ago, I would have said that this year's 
awards ceremonies are going to be about as interesting as a, a Lions-Browns game. Somebody is going to win, but is it really going to matter? Uh, but then I think two weeks ago when Babylon came out, that really, okay. now we've got ourselves like real competition. Because okay. now you've got Margot Robbie going head to head with Kate Blanchett. Yes. And Kate Blanchett was a front runner by far before Babylon oh, came out. Oh, I still think she's going to get it. I, I, but yes, but it's a knockdown drag out because you've got Margot Robbie, who's a, a younger, very physical actress who can cross the line between comedy and drama effortlessly. And then you've got Kate Blanchett, who did this amazing performance in that classroom, that just stole, you know, the the film. And and now we've got two actresses really duking it out. And I'm so happy to see that. I really like a good competition. And Kate is going for her third uh, Oscar, and she this and the film is called uh, Tar. Tar. Right? Yes. And, yes. And uh, this is the reason she's going to get it. But she did learn German for this role. Yeah. How do you learn German, except over several years? How <laughs> <laughs> possible is it? Well, if people have learned Klingon, so <laughs> if you can do that, I suppose you can learn German. <laughs> um, all right. So let's let's look again. Give me throw something out there. Uh, I'll okay. Tell you, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Here I go. But I want to throw one out to you. I don't even know if you've seen it. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh gosh, yes! I saw that when it first came out. What was it? January? It was. It seems like forever yes, ago. It was ago. And this is the film that's going to be the big outlier uh, for the for the for the award uh -huh. season. Is how much impact can a movie that came out that far ago, that long ago, have uh, on the awards? Because typically, your winners are films that get released October, November, December. Yeah. yeah. And but what's happened with that film is it's developed a cult following. Yes. And that cult following apparently is very strong in Hollywood as well. So we've got Jamie Lee Curtis in there with a nomination. Yes. We've got Hei Ku, Kei Hu Kwan in there with a nomination. Yes. Of course, we remember from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And uh, we've got um, uh, the directors are nominated. The movie is nominated. So it will be interesting to see whether a film from January has enough traction. And a film with so much of an international cachet, yes. whether that's going to strike my fellow Americans, uh, I don't know. It's a very niche movie. It's yeah, a very niche yeah, market know. movie, but it was still playing yeah. in theaters until July. I know, I know, I know. But they're always surprised, like Moonlight. Oh yeah, and Coda. Yeah, and yeah. Coda. Yeah. Right. And nobody had seen Coda and it wins the Academy of Award. <laughs> when it came for it, I said, oh, that it's got it. They had all the sentiment. Yes, it, did. it, was, it was definitely <laughs> just going to going to do well. But I'll, I'll throw this out to you. Yes. Look at what has happened now in the last two weeks of the supporting actor category. All right. So who we? Oh, Ken. Uh, you know what? Uh, you hear the phones ringing again. People are saying we're feel they're feeling that we're almost over with uh, cinema classics. Okay. And they're right. So. I think what we need to do is just say, you can hear more about our blather if you want to go to Double Take on the podcast experience at WCBE. And listen as we explore more of this interesting list of nominees.